sometime in the distant past, Venusians or some other interstellar traveler came to Earth and they had huge ships that they were traveling in with massive weight. And when they settled down on the soils of southeastern North Carolina, their landing pads sunk into the soil and created these depressions that we call Carolina Bays. Well, the depressions filled up with rainwater and became breeding grounds for mosquitoes. And the Venusians, when they were out doing their ex exploratory work, were plagued by the mosquitoes, and they sent back to their home planet for something to control them. And what they have is this living flypaper, so to speak, that we call the Venus flytrap. And what they did is they would string lines from their ship out to distant points, and they'd hang these plants like hanging baskets. The plants adapted well to southeastern North Carolina's environment. Uh, over time, the, the Venusians or whoever they were, they, they gathered all of the information they were here to collect and uh, picked up everything that they left behind, most everything. Two things that, that they forgot. One were the Venus flytraps, and another uh, is this large object, uh, an artifact, if you will, that most of the towns in this area have. We call them water towers, but I'm not so sure that that's the case. I don't know anybody who has ever been inside one of these things. Traps? Yes, sir. Got plenty of them. Some here and some oh, in that one. Some see. over there. Every to it. See? That's what they look like. Now. Right. I, I had no idea. Yeah. How long do they live? I've kept them seven, eight years, ten years. Really? Very that good. long? Yeah. Um, no special feeding? No, you never feed them. We want to take one with us to uh, Germany. Uh, we treat them there in the climate yeah, the I'll same way, you, indoors. I'll give you a car and tell you all about it. Oh, that would be fine. Which one would you recommend us to take? A nice one. one like that. Yeah, I would yes. have chosen that one. Yes. Can I repot it? Because the, the pot is not very attractive, is it? Yeah. <laughs> let's, hope, <laughs> let's hope we have a lot of flies. Yeah. And mosquitoes. Yes. Oh, gosh. I want to feed them well. Nice. Interesting. Yeah. Eight dollars. Eight dollars. Well, okay. And you get your change. The Venus flytrap is an endangered species in North Carolina. And poaching has been a major reason for the decline in Venus flytrap numbers. In my experience, people that we've caught here on these game lands are mostly blacks that live in the area. They sell them to a few local dealers who in turn sell them mainly to tourists. So as long as there's that market for them, there's always going to be poaching the Venus flytraps. As long as they keep poaching them, we're going to keep trying to catch them. We uh, spend as much time as we possibly can trying to catch the flytrap poachers in here digging. Sometimes we're successful, sometimes we're not as successful. However, we do uh, put a lot of pressure on them. It's a waiting game. To have a lot of patience and a lot of perseverance to uh, get out there and, and catch them on a consistent basis. This is one of the areas that the flytrap poachers come into regularly. There's some private land over here adjoining onto the game lands here, about 600 yards down this power line. They'll be dropped off by a vehicle, come in here, hit a fire break and work their way back out to the east side of the game lands. They can dig along these ridges. They don't have to worry too much about being seen from this road. The only problem with this is right now at this particular time of the year, we've had a lot of wet weather. There's a small creek down there. Probably they're not gonna use this area. So what we'll do is we'll ease on up the road here. There's a little bit better area and try it and see if we can't find some fresh tracks.
the mystery to me about the flytrap is how it comes to be that the flytrap is found only in southeastern North Carolina. Because you can take it outside of this area and grow it in a greenhouse. You can grow it in a backyard upstate New York as long as it doesn't get too cold. But it's just in this area that you find it thriving in the wild, which is why it's in such trouble. Because this is southeastern North Carolina is one of the, the last bastions of uh, land that hasn't fallen to the bulldozer. And so because it's isolated in this one area and people are flocking to this area to live, the, uh, the flytrap is that much more threatened because it can't go anywhere else. And we often ask the question, why do we need to protect this particular animal or this particular plant? But I think it should be enough just to say it exists. Therefore, we should ensure that it will be here for future generations. Holly Sheltered is kind of the last stronghold of the Venus flytrap. How you doing this morning? Good to see you. Just let me get one. I love it out here. It's kind of a, one of the last places where there's not a lot of development. There's nothing out here but woods and animals, and I like to take care of it. One of the most interesting and misunderstood things about a Venus flytrap is the mechanism by which they close. They have trigger hairs that are built in on each side of the trap that an insect crawling in, there are six trigger hairs and if he hits one of them, nothing happens. This is nature's way of protecting the plant from overexertion or expending too much energy. A computer starts when that insect touches one of those six hairs, and it'll run for 40 seconds. Because within 40 seconds, if that insect moves back around and hits another hair, it closes. One, two, I hit two as I came across. Let's try this one. They close in a hurry when you hit two of them together. Nature's own death trap. Rod, it's 532, go ahead. 10 4, we have a report of illegal fly trapping activity, Holly Shelter Game Lands. Report of a small gray car with three individuals seen at East Gate, Holly Shelter. 10 4, Raleigh, I'm in the area, I'll take care of it. Oh, this has been seen coming in this morning is a known fly trapper, and uh, we're going to ride around and see if we can find where he's been dropped off or some of his uh, partners have been dropped off at. His uh, nickname's Lemonade, everybody calls him Lemon. He's been digging fly traps for as long as I can remember. He's been out here for years and years digging. He's been convicted three times this year, well, three times in his life, and once this year by me. The judge made a, uh, a court order that says that if he's caught out here on the game lands at any time, 
that he'll serve an active jail sentence. I've been chased a lot, and I've been caught a lot, but here late, I learned how to beat it all the way. I mean, I just don't intend to get caught anymore by the warden. I just intend to be a winner. I'm going to dig fly traps, and I'm going to go out there every time without getting caught, because uh, I live to get away. We might stay out there about maybe an hour or something, make $100. Might stay out there all day, might make 200 You know, it all depends how you feel and how the mosquitoes bite and how the snakes crawling and everything, yeah. And uh, you got to deal with all that stuff out there. But basically, you know, we just love to do it. We, you know, kind of bought up doing it. It's like a habit. And I just, I just, matter of fact, I just love the woods. That's some nice pretty one there. Yeah. All right, I'm coming on over. We'll start digging them. Go check it out. These some big ones right here, man. Yeah. Nice. See that side right there? Yeah, and I'm here some nice pretty. Yeah. Let's dig these right here. All right. Uh, we, um... Basically, all you got to do in the winter time is pull the grass back. And most of the time, if you know what you're doing and you're right area, all you got to do is dig down just like that. It's a very weird plant, but we don't know why it's like that, man. I reckon that's a Mother Nature thing. Basically, if you're out here digging, all you got to do, most of the time in the summertime, that flower there will be white. What we do when we dig in, we'll dig it up, we'll dig the fly trap out of the ground, and throw the seed right back on the ground. And that way, when you come back the next year, whenever, they'll multiply to be. Well, that tribute is what's down here. Traps everywhere. And come back. I probably could come in this area right here in probably a couple of hours. I probably could make $150, $200, something like that. You can come out here just because you see a lot of fly trap, and that don't mean that you can make. $150 because I make it, you know. <laughs> what I'm saying, it takes time. You got to learn how to do them. Because when I first started, it was like $25, $30. But, yeah. you know, I kept on digging until I, anything I do, I try to master it. So I just mastered it. You know, I want to dig more than anybody else is. You know, that's the way it is. Here I am, digging traps. And... Mm -hmm. I know the certain areas and the paths that they use, and I can go out and find, you know, fresh tracks. Or if I get a report where they've been dropped off at and seen, I can go back to that area, and uh, you know, we'll go and we'll track them through the woods, and we'll try to sneak up on them and catch them that way. Gotta watch out for them snakes, though. They they're around in this water. These snakes. Yeah. Man, I don't worry about no snakes. Yeah, but well, be careful. I'm the snake. The most effective method is wearing out shoe leather. Get out there and walk in the areas where there's a lot of fly traps, where you found sign of the poachers digging, where you found sign of them coming in, and get out there and walk. I sit up on the on the trails and just wait them out. See this track right here? That's been done this morning, and uh. There's nobody that hunts in here, so see how they walked right across the creek here? They stood right here and walked around. Somebody been down here digging them, though. See that? Yeah, pretty, man. Yeah. Yeah, pretty, though. Yeah. The warden come now, we're out here digging them. He arrests us now. And then you got to go to court, and then they'll find you. And, um, you know, if they keep catching you, they're going to keep finding you. It'll be more and more and more money. And maybe later on, the judge might get tired of it and um, give you a little bit of time in jail. When you come out here, you got helicopters at you. You got men on horses, people running at you, you know, about a fly trap. And people just got where they just ain't going to come out here anymore and try to dig fly traps, you know, and have to go through all that trouble. 
But for me, hey, I just want to, hey, go down with it, you know. There's a little hill right back here that they usually go across. We'll walk to here and see if they've, if they've been across it. If they haven't, this may have been a hunter. I can't tell for sure, but we'll know once we get back here. They've lived here all their lives. They grew up here. Their fathers probably dug fly traps, and their grandfathers probably dug fly traps. You know, it's something they've always done. They've all, they spend a lot of time in the woods here, and uh, they've developed their ways of coming in and getting out. A lot of them are really good. You know, they're they're just as good a woodsman as you could ever find. You know, they know how to hide and, and they know how to get out here, and they know the woods really well. They know it better than I do. Looks like hunters. They haven't come in here. I think this is a hunter's track that's come in and went back out. I think what we need to do is go on to another location and see if we can't pick up something else. See a big one. 30 cent piece. I just like to dig anyway, because I like, like for people to get at me. I like for the man to get at me. You ever thought about what it would be if you went out there and wasn't nobody running at you? It wouldn't be no fun, would it? Oh, that's the way I love to <laughs> dig them if I got to dig them. <laughs> I like for the man to be running at me. You know, we can go sit down the next day and tell their buddies how we got away from them. <laughs> I love it. You done left me out there about 35 more minutes, man. I done had some money today. You probably been in jail. Jail? Yeah. <laughs> I've been there before. I ain't been there. Just a vacation away from home. That's all. I got a, I feel like if I was doing something wrong, I could see myself really getting caught, but I feel like it's a plant that God put in to help other people, and I feel like I'm one of them people that's gonna dig them, and they gonna have to keep running, they gonna have to do whatever they can to stop me, because I don't intend to quit. <laughs> <laughs> 